Hello IGN, my name is Jose Otero. I'm here with Daniel Orwella from Nintendo's Treehouse, and we are checking out Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Brothers Edition. Yes. Which is part of Puzzle and Dragons <laughs> Z plus Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Brothers Edition. Two games in one. Two yes, games in one. And a long title. Yes. Uh, but this is coming out May twenty second in the US. Yes. One price, twenty nine ninety nine, two games all on the same day. A lot of content as we've been kind of going through the first half of this and now we're yeah. doing this other portion. Of so, going into more detail, yeah. Yeah, so we're jumping into not direct gameplay, and we do have a commentary on IGN for that, which you should definitely check out if you haven't seen this game before. But we are actually going to jump into some of the more team building, more uh, sort of RPG focus yeah. of this game. And along with that, a little bit of a treat of the score attack as well. So we'll kind of sprinkle it together. Okay. Um, so basically, we kind of went to that core gameplay team, uh, how to choose the best team to use for different level, which mm -hmm. can the strategy can change for every stage. Okay. Um, but we're going to go is a little bit more of what, what do you do with all those things? How do you make your team more powerful overall? Okay. So here we are going going in the worlds. There's In every world, there's a toad house, um, or you can just quickly... so. I can always jump to the Toad House at the beginning of each world, or you can simply type worlds and just go to the Toad House. Okay. There's multiple ways to get different things. So here you can do a lot of different factors, like one is editing your team. There are multiple team slots, as we discussed a little bit before, that you can actually set up teams you want to create, have those ready to go. Okay. I'm not going to save any changes. I didn't change anything. Okay. Next is Power Up. Power Up is the ability to transfer experience from one ally to another. And this is important a way to, especially when you start getting new characters, you want to level them up really quickly. Mm -hmm. So in this case... I'm going to... So can any type pass to any other type, or do they have to be sort of like doubles? You no, know, any type can pass to any type. You can okay. get, you can give up an ally completely if you want to, but you can't sacrifice... I can't, like, destroy... I can't give away Mario's experience. Mm -hmm. I can't give away Toad's experience. It has Got to be it. one of the allies, Got not it. the Got leaders it. or helpers in that okay. situation. And the allies are modeled on Super Mario Brothers enemies, like Boom Boom on this list, or you see uh, a couple of others, Goombas. Cheap Sheeps. Spinies, Spinies. Two, yep. Wiggler. The whole menagerie yeah. is here. So let's see, who do I want to help level up a bit more? Got I want to make up in the corner. The swamp up there in the corner. He's already at max level, so it doesn't bet doesn't help him much. Um, let's what color is the green ones down there? So let's try to help out. Oh, there's so many options to choose from. Well, let's do something quick. So um, I'm gonna say this this guy this red Koopa Trooper. Oh, sorry, red Koopa Paratrooper. Mm -hmm. Want to help level him? He's at level seven. So I'm gonna say I want to power him up. I can now choose what to sacrifice. I have a lot of spinies, so I'm gonna give up two of my spinies. Now, on purpose, I'm choosing to use the same color. If I wanted to, I could use this unmatched colors. I don't have to use fire or red. Mm -hmm. It just gives you get you get more experience by using the same elemental attribute. Elemental type. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, so we're gonna pass these uh, this XP on. Yep. You can kind of watch it go up. Whoop. Leveled up. All right. <laughs> and all the Mario fanfare you would expect, all the sound <laughs> effects you would expect. Now, if you want to, you can tap the screen to speed up that as well. Okay. Um, now, when you're doing these le these power ups, what's really cool too is when you do that, it does uh, it does change. Sometimes there's a random chance that you'll get like bonus bonus bonuses as you do it. So mm -hmm. you always want to take it into account. Okay. So here I'm going to take this Hammer Bros at level 31. I'm going to choose because his cap is 50. I'm going to use one of my coffers. Coffers are a little, these are kind of an enemy that's a little bit harder to find sometimes, but mm -hmm. when you do, and they usually run away after like one turn or two turns, but if you kill, if you're able to defeat them, what's great is that they tend to give you a lot of experience. Yeah. You may recognize the coffers if you played Super Mario uh, 3D World, yes. I believe. I think that's right. Yeah. That was the last time I saw them. Mm -hmm. So this goes up this way. And you notice here, I actually have a little bit bonus down there. Okay. Which is plus three in my recovery area. Just a little random bonus will help you out. Okay. And those are selected randomly. Now the see, coffers had nothing to do correct. with Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a random chance. You see it's still going. Oh, I'm at 38. Okay. Now it's max a, level's 50, you said? Level 50. Yeah, no, okay. cool one to give a different option to show you that. So this guy is Koopa Troopa's level 4. I'm going to use a... I'm going to, actually, this guy's level 1. I'm going to grab a level 1 Koopa Troopa, yellow Koopa Troopa. And I'm going to give him that yellow coffer. Okay. Because you probably should go to about level 25. We're pretty close. Now, instead of watching actually cycle one... It's going to go this whole thing this way. I can just tap on the screen. Okay. And he did go to level 25. Wow. Okay. So the coffers are really valuable to use. And sometimes I, I, I use them on a Koopa Troopa. I usually tend to use uh, my coffers when I have them. So I would probably grab, let's see, like this, my Fox Luigi, and I would give him a green coffer. Okay. I tend to always make, I, I tend to focus on my leaders a little bit more. It's up to each person's choice on how you want to do that. So instead of, well, again, I can just... He went to level okay. 25. And he also went to Yeah, 25. he went up to nine levels. Wow. In one shot. Okay. So it's a really good way to get experience if you have those coffers available to cool. you. Cool. 
So that's kind of you do that that whole idea of powering up in that area. Yeah. So there is also you had mentioned to me uh, mm -hmm. sort of this next thing that's yes. coming up. So transform. Talk yes. to us about that. What, what, so what transforms are fun here? ways that basically you can evolve or you can you kind of change the characters up into different forms. So in example, I'll grab this hammer bro. Hammer bro is based on certain items you acquire. Like right now, I have you need I don't have enough fire flowers. You need five, but you can transform him. I have enough to make a, a boomerang bro. Okay. I don't have enough to make an ice flower, an ice bro. I almost have enough to make a sledge bro. Okay. But you can make these characters and it's kind of evolve them as you go. Now, when you evolve them, you can notice that the current character up here on the top screen, he's, his max is level 50. He's based on his he's yellow or light based as his element. Mm -hmm. When you transform him, though, his skill, not, not only does his, his element can change, his stats all boost, his max levels higher, his fire, his skill has changed. Mm. And his rec and his awoken skill, which you don't have access to yet, yep. has changed, will also change. So you have to keep these in mind that when you're deciding which how you want to evolve these characters, because once you evolve them, they're going to completely change up. Okay. So here's Big Boo. Like Boo, he can turn into Big Boo. Okay. Or I can turn into Boo Treo. Yeah. Um, and these are various aspects there. So I'm going to. Where's another character that's a good one? Oh, here's a good one. Uh, the, let's go and use this one. It is Buzzy Beetle. Okay. Buzzy Beetle actually will go. Bony you, Beetle. Yeah, you can Bony okay. Beetle or into Para Beetle. Now when Got you change him to Para Beetle, you'll notice he completely changes to light. Yep. And everything changes. His max cap's changing different skill, all these things. So you want to keep these in mind deciding what to do. And you gather the items you need in order to... Uh, the items you need to get, you can gather as you defeat enemies you go through the game. Mm. The other way to get items, though, which is cool, after you finish World 3, when you defeat Morton, you should go here to the lucky question block. Okay. And for every 100 coins you have, it doesn't... you don't The spotlights don't really... I know there's like, choose one of the three blocks. The spotlights <laughs> don't... <laughs> have nothing to do no, with no, it. No, no. I believe... I'm like always... I'm always like, okay... Got it in the center. Like, that was always my goal. It doesn't matter as much. You can sometimes get a one-up out of it. Okay. Sometimes you get a cheap, cheap coin. Okay. So materials you can get. Materials you use... Add, oh, another boo mushroom. Oh, boo mushroom. Okay. Poison mushroom. I have 800 coins. I might use up my coins to see if I can get lucky and get another... Come on, cat suits. <laughs> <laughs> and last one there. Here you and go. These are all random. Okay. These are all random. So now I'm out of 100 coins. So while you're playing the game, it's always good to get these coins. You can get coins in various ways by simply defeating enemies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a question mark block in the stage, and it might say, "Complete if you want to, uh, if you want to complete this challenge, complete four combos in three turns, or it could be clear seven green orbs in three turns. Okay. Or it could be sometimes you get dual challenges, complete seven green orbs and four combos in three turns." Mm. And that when the and if you complete that, you'll get either an item or sometimes like you get a P wing or here's 50 coins, some kind okay. of thing to help you out in that okay. way as well. So wait a minute, to the right. Ah, uh, you want to bring up the awaken, awaken skill. And actually, I will come back to the awaken skill in just a moment. Okay. Just because okay. so, I want to get to skill up as well, which is another option you could do as well. Got it. All right. So we we're showing skills earlier, and skills are based on the number of turns you have to complete before that skill becomes available. Okay. Um, what's cool though here is that you can actually lower the number of turns to bring that skill to be active, mm. which can benefit you in multiple ways. One, how you fight enemies, or we talked about it earlier, talked a little bit before um, alternate paths. Sometimes mm. you're going like through a world, and like there's an, let's say you in order to take this special yellow warp pipe, you need to have yellow orbs, yeah. but there are no yellow orbs in the stage because it's only yeah. red, blue, green. So through a skill, you can have orbs transform into light orbs and then be able to clear into that path. Correct. A good example of that is my yellow Koopa Troopa. Mm -hmm. You can turn farms into light orbs. Okay. So right here, I could, in theory, jump into him and use some of the fruit I have, which I've acquired over the time. Okay. And how much lower will it bring that requirement? One you turn. No, just one, one turn. One turn. Now, if I do it again, yeah. it costs more fruit. Mm -hmm. So it cost me two this time. Yep. But now it'll cost me more fruit if I look at here again. It cost me three fruit next time, okay. and it'll drop it another turn. Is there a limit to how far down you can whittle the the skill sort of uh, requirement? I've never personally tried to push it to one because I've never. I it, would. I mean, I, it would take a lot of it time. It could. It would take a ton of time if you think about it, because just you have to have the right fruit or the right sort of requirement, the material. But mm -hmm. oh. yeah, you could always go down. And the other thing to keep in mind too is if you careful, because if you transform the character mm -hmm. at some point. The skill, because it gets a new skill, it mm -hmm. resets it. So if you spend all this time with this one character, and you only have, let's say you, let's say you only have one oh. yellow Koopa Troopa. Do you want to transform him? You can't. I'm glad you said this. Because you might have been like, oh, you might get this. You, let's say you got PD Piranha. Mm -hmm. Well, the PD Piranha's gonna, he's not going to be transformed. Let go of PD. What else? Are you <laughs> 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 um, so the, the flame chops level. So you have to, you have to debate too, because once a character, the max level a character can ever get is 99. So okay. once you transform a character or get a character whose level cap is 99, okay. you're pretty much safe. Okay. So like by default, like Flame Chomp. Mm -hmm. Flame Chomp. If you go into him, he is by default level ninety nine. Okay. So with him, 
I don't have the items to do it. I don't have enough star coin, green star coins. But I would never, since his max cap is level 99, I know he can't transform mm. in this game. Okay. So I can up his skill up, and it's not. I'm not gonna have to worry about. You're not gonna worry about. It. But there's so many down. allies you have. And there's so many things you want to. Do you want to drop just one guy's skill to be super low, or do you want to make it more of like? Because anyway, you could have everyone have one guy with a skill with like let's say maybe one or two turns to turn a skill. Wouldn't it be better, in my opinion, to have? Five team members that can all have their skills turned mm -hmm. in four turns. Mm -hmm. So it's just a debate of how, how you decide you, yeah. to put it together yeah. and how you want to make that yeah, team. And you gotta, out. you're kind of stuck with the choice afterwards. I mean, you can always find more fruit at the end of the day, or whatever the material is. Correct. Too, you can so. always try to find more with that. So you have to kind of go back through different levels and see mm -hmm. what you can acquire. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's different characters there. So like this was like the Goomba here, but the Gold Mushrooms. I could lower his tackles are my favorite attacks. So he does direct damage against yep, yep, one yep. character, but okay. I'm not gonna. Don't want to waste all my stuff up. Cool. All right. So, what yeah. about this awoken? Ah, uh, yes, time. the awoken skill. The awoken skill. What can you skills. say about awoken skills? So, this is something that does also apply to Puzzle and Dragons universe. Puzzle and Dragons universe. People who are familiar with Puzzle and Dragon will recognize this. You're right. That character right there, who's kind of floating, this little like white kind of small dragon wings and an egg, is named Tamadra. Okay. Tamadra is from the Puzzle and Dragons franchise. And the awaken the awaken area, which you can access awoken skills here, is it's not available yet. This is, becomes available later in the game, even though I'm already in World Six, as a, a World Five. So keep that in mind. Okay. It takes a little bit further in. I'm backing out because I want to show you where I can. Uh, I'm just backing out to go to my team to show you doo -doo -doo, what an awoken skill could be. Awoken skill is very similar to the uh, helper or leader skills we talked about. That, that that passive skill that helps your whole team out. That mm -hmm. like all your team, all your fire based team members have a 1.5 multiplier or something like that. Okay. So some characters have awoken skills like my fluttering flame chomp. Okay. So again, if once you're able using certain items, you have to gather again, and you're able to awaken the skill to you can awaken his awoken skill. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Nice work. Um, Basically, it gives you that kind of passive skill again, because only it's meant those are, those passive skills or leader skills, helper skills are meant to only be for leaders and helpers. Okay. But later in the game, you can actually have allies. Certain allies can have it. Mm. So this guy here has reduces the number of turns required to first use skills, which again lends to your point. Having that, having him with an awoken skill like that means I can more quickly get my skills turned on mm. the first time I go into different levels. Got it. Got it. Now, not everyone has an awoken skill. But how would you activate it during the match? Like what? It's automatic. What? It is automatic. It's automatic. Leader skills and helper skills are automatic, as are awoken skills. Got it. So once you open that part of the character in that part of the game, that is something. That is another skill you're getting. If I the bring him on my match. team, he's on my team, yeah. and his skill is awoken. Got it. Got it. Or yeah, what awoken? <laughs> grammar in my head now. <laughs> yeah, we're all we're yeah. jumping back and forth. <laughs> so if his awoken skill is, is active, if he's if he's on my team, when I first walk into a level. The first time, so required to first use skill. So basically, when I first walk into a world, his skills will be able to help me out. Yep, yep. The skill counter will go down. And that goes in that area right there. And that's how you start. This is where you start building a lot of that strategy. Okay. How you want to develop your team? Yeah, do you yeah, want? Yeah. Do you need to carry seventeen spinies? Okay. Probably not. That's where you start deciding who do you want to set, who do you want to transfer experience from, how do you want to change these things up as game. Got it. And then we have. Uh, oh, what do you have here? Oh, these are items. It's a quick way have. to see how many items you have. Like I have a bunch okay. of flame chomp coins. Okay. Oh, P wings, waves, P wings, awesome. like that. and so you, you can see the items are, are actually scheduled by transforming. Okay. And for skill up, oh, so you know it. the items belong in different categories, got which it. is really okay. helpful. So, so you know what you've got. They don't double across. Uh, Correct. Transformation and skill. So you mentioned then uh, score attack. So yes. Let's, let's check that out. Which I'm going to score attack real quick. So score attack's a fun little mode. A little bonus area here. Score attack. Okay. So there's three difficulties here: hard, medium, and easy. What's cool though here is that this changes the gameplay a little bit. Instead of taking, you know, how you could in the previous one we were playing, you could take your time, be very debating, decide what move you wanted to make before you went into a certain area, before you made a move. This one you have 300 seconds, and you're given yep. a preset team, and your goal is basically to get through that whole level with yep. the highest score possible. Mm -hmm. um, th this does scale up very well. Easy is relatively easy. Meeting it's pretty hard. Hard is really hard. Um, and it's and when you start doing these harder skill these harder score attacks, it's really important to complete as many combos as possible. Okay, that's how you start getting a lot more damage going on. In the got game. it, got it. As you said, I know you wanted to see Cat Luigi, so <laughs> Cat Luigi's is. here. So Cat he does come available. And Cat, he does available, become available. Cat okay. transformation. Yep. <laughs> Cat transformation. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. All right. So we also see the preset team. You have a Rosalina as well. On yes. So team. there's Cat Luigi, Luigi King Boo. Okay. Boom Boom. And those are they're at level ninety. <laughs> Womp and booze. Womp and booze. That's that's one of the transformations you can make of the thwomp. Okay. 
Bowser Jr. can be played in this and mode. And some of these characters you won't necessarily get in the regular Puzzle and Dragon, Super Mario Edition Puzzle and Dragon. Correct. Gameplay. It's mainly yeah. for the score attack mode. Okay, got it. Um, so you'll get like special allies. If correct. Like Specialized versions to jump in here. So cool. yeah, you have to play that okay. way. So jump we'll, in. Let's see what you got. You want to try this time? Oh, you don't want to see that. I don't think the people at home want to see we that. Can be, we can jump in easy and let you try the easy ones. Easy oh, thanks. Version of that, so. Yeah, that, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, I just want to continue to watch you make these. Uh, watch these, me, watch these me fumble through the game. Yeah. Sure. Maybe not, but you said uh, you have 300 seconds to kind of and get as the many. Yeah, I see it ticking away in the corner. Um, so for completing it in under 300 seconds, what are you getting again? Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, just to complete it? Yeah. Just uh, you get to try to get the highest score possible, and okay. then and then when you street pass with your friends, you'll be able to see who has the highest score. Okay. Okay. But I just realized what's challenging here is that I have no wood on my team. No wood, okay. no, no, there's no wood guy. I have nothing on my team that we can attack with wood. So basically, I'm now trying to fight against a water based <laughs> enemy, and, oh, I had, no. and I can't use wood. So basically, I have to find ways to create more combos with. Yeah. Uh, does that cat transformation have a wood as a secondary? The secondary. So oh, I have a little okay. bit in there. Okay. Got it. Oh, this is not going well. Of course I'm joking. Uh, sure you are. <laughs> there we go. Nice. And then once you complete it, again, like you said, you know, street passing with friends, you'll see who got the higher score. Correct. Do you get any other rewards like, uh, you know, money or XP, you know, coins and what have you? No, it's more just a fun challenge and, sh and share those scores with other people and see what okay, you can do. Okay, okay, okay. More of a high score. Just more. But it changes the way you kind of play the game a little bit because you are playing with a timer instead of playing with it as... Uh, sorry. No, that's okay. This is this has got to be a, a lot to juggle. Well, I feel bad. I can't beat this guy. This guy's freaking huge, and he's like, I can't damage him. Oh, I have skills available. I'm not paying attention to that portion. So the King Spite recovers a thousand HP, changes hard orbs into dark orbs. I'm gonna do that. What other skills do we have here? Another cool. Oh, actually, Rosalina's a good one too. Oh. Okay. Changes all fire, wood, water orbs, and oh, changes all it's of them. It's dark. Okay. You've got enough dark representation on this. Reduces number of turns needed to use skills by one turn. That's cool. I'll save that for a minute. Junior Smash changed hard orbs. Now, bear in mind, the timer's still running while I'm doing this, by the way. Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to keep the orbs there because they're kind of already randomly generated. How many phases is this battle? It would be sort of like a regular uh, sort of uh, battle from campaign. Like, there are multiple it sort could, of yeah, phases. Multiple phases, like, right. Yeah. Before you fight a boss. But as you can mm -hmm. see... Yeah, this isn't going so well. Or is it? We'll find out. There's a bunch of fire. Like All right. Yep. And you're still going. All right. The funny part is the timer's still running while I'm waiting for combos to complete. Yes. Yeah, and there's no way to speed through that. So you've nope. got to kind of make sure that that's something you're... Ooh. Okay, that looks good. Ugh, there's so much stuff going on, so I got to do that one there. Luckily, he doesn't take as much damage as the piranhas that you were sort of battling earlier or some of that stuff. That's because um, I, have, so I have a lot more hit points this time. I have 12,000 hit points versus when I had only 5,000. Okay. That's mainly because the guys I have are level 90. So that gives you a lot more a lot more options to do in that in that situation. But yeah, that's right. Exactly what you have to be kind of thinking about is how that's going to play out. Uh -oh. timer's already gonna get there. It the is. Music, the music kicks in. I'm still <laughs> the that, first guy. Even that is in here. Yeah, this this is. I'm much better at the easy and the medium one. <laughs> okay, got. It. Oh, you tackled hard. I didn't. I looked away for a second. I saw. Oh, this is definitely hard. This is the hard one. <laughs> okay, better be. <laughs> if this was uh, medium or easy, I'd be like, oh no. Medium is still a good challenge. Too, yeah. But yeah. Okay. But it's this is you definitely meant to be something. That's, this is and that's why it's meant to see like oh you think you're really good at the game and you realize well I have a lot to learn still. Yeah, yeah. And it's about trying to master those combos and how those things play out. It's sort of interesting too to tackle it from the perspective of not having to do all the team management, but rather jumping in to just see what you can make with what is there. Yes. Yeah. The time limit though, that's evil. I have to say. <laughs> and, the and the music turns up too, which you heard also. Yeah. Just the, like the hurry like, up. Oh. The hurry up tone hits and you're like uh oh it's time to move. And then that, that's why it also makes it feel like a Mario game to some extent as well, mm -hmm. which I really like. Yeah. I don't know why I just did that. I watched it happen. I'm getting nervous. The same thing. Getting nervous. Oof. I'm well, sure, sure, yeah. 38, 36. No, I'm, I'm going to quit do out. That. 
All right, well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> score the bailout by Daniel bailout. Willa, but well, also the, score attack. Well, mode. the cool thing I want to show, too, is that because you mentioned that you were kind of showing off uh, the. This is before we left, before we finished up, is I did want to quickly to show, like, there is just what, show what medium is because you do get different team. Here's Luigi mm -hmm. statue or statue okay. of Luigi. Nice. Uh, and different skills. And now you have Magic Koopas as well. Okay. Again, with different Awoken skills. You kind of look at his Veiler on. Another Rosalina? Yes. Cool. Different Rosalina. And then easy. Which I think we've seen all these ones. These ones we've seen all these cards. You get Boo Mario, Boo Luigi. Now, the cool thing about Score Attack, Score Attack is available as soon as you start off the game. Okay. So it's a nice way to kind of get an idea for it. You're like, oh, I'm going to try hard because I'm really good at the game. And you saw me getting my, my butt kicked <laughs> real quick. So, yeah, that's something to kind of worry about in that aspect as well. So, yeah. It kind of goes through most of what... I'm trying to remember if there's anything else to show off in the game so far. And that kind of covers most of what we've gone through. So from the core gameplay, the different worlds, the score attack. Again, it's two games in one. This is just one of the two games we've been talking about, too. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, there you have it, folks. Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Bros. Edition. Daniel, thank you so much <laughs> for stopping by to show this off and to take us through. Definitely, uh, you should put this on your radars, folks who are watching us. And for more Nintendo coverage, make sure you keep it right here at IGN.